Hey students, uh, welcome back. Today we're going to learn how to make a simple arcade style game using Scratch. I'm going to play the game here on the screen. You'll see how it works. When I click the green flag, you'll see I have an underwater scene and I have a bunch of fish swimming back and forth. And uh, when I move my mouse around on the screen, I see a crosshair sprite or a target, we'll call it. And if I click on a fish, uh, right on a fish, I should get a point. You see my points going up there on the screen. However, if I'm off and I don't click right on a fish, I can lose five points um, for missing. And uh, so if I'm not careful, I can actually lose the game by getting zero or less than zero points, and then the game is over. Okay, so we're gonna make this simple game. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and make a brand new game in Scratch. Uh, when a new game is open in Scratch, we see we always have the cat here. Let's get rid of the cat. We don't need that. Instead, we'll go in and add some other sprites and backdrop. Let's go to the backdrop first to the stage. Click on the Choose a Backdrop button here, which will open our library. We'll go down and look for the underwater scene underwater one which we find here in the library click on that and now we have a uh, an underwater scene for a backdrop all right uh, we want to next add some fish and to add sprites to our game environment we're going to click on the little cat face down here choose a sprite if we search for animals specifically and look through the list here we will find fish down here uh, if we select that, it's going to add the basic fish to our screen. We're going to go ahead and do that three more times. We want separate fish, four, four separate fish in our game. So we'll click here again and search for animals, choose the fish again. Uh, but this time I'll go to the costume and choose the second fish costume. We see that the one fish sprite actually has four different fish costumes. We'll do that. Come back here, choose another fish under the animal section. We now have fish three sprite in here. We'll go ahead to its costume and choose the third fish costume, which is fish C. Come back to our sprite, choose a sprite button, choose animals, fish one more time, and go back to our costumes pet tab here and choose the fourth fish costume. Alrighty, now let's go back to our main stage area and we're going to uh, lay out the four different types of fish uh, that we have here. And we kind of want them stacked across the screen, something like that, from the bottom left to the top right of our screen. All right. When, if you notice when I played the game, the fish were a lot smaller than they appear now because uh, we want to make the game a little more challenging. And so if the fish are small in size, that will help uh, make the game more challenging. And so we'll s select our first fish here and we'll change the size there to 50. We'll choose our blue fish, which is fish two. And we'll set that one size to maybe about 60. And we'll choose fish three change its size to about 40 and this last yellow fish here make it real small set its size to 30. all right again our fish the smaller they are the harder they are going to be to hit with our target all righty uh, before we go any further let's go ahead and save our game up here it says untitled we want to turn this uh save this appropriately we'll call it fish arcade it's going to be the name of our game and then up here in the upper right, we should, as long as we're logged in, we should be able to click the Save Now button and we can save it to our projects. Next, we want to start coding our fish. What we're going to do is choose our first fish here and go into the Code tab. And um, usually the first event that you add or the first block of code you add is the When Green Flag Clicked. This is uh, a function event that will begin running as soon as you click the green flag up here and so it's typically you want to set up your sprites their position size a direction and things like that 
when the green flag is first clicked. So we'll go ahead in here and uh, find the looks tab, the purple one. And in here we can switch the costume. Again, we even though we've already switched the costume for our four fish, sometimes it's a good idea to make sure in the code we actually set the proper costume for each fish. So we're gonna say, uh, set this costume to fish A. Then we're going to go to the motion tab, which is the dark blue one. And if we look down here, we're gonna see a set X location and set Y location. Now these are gonna take numbers based on the coordinate system of our screen. And if you're not quite sure what numbers to put in there, what you can do is you can take your sprite and move it to the position you want it to be, as you can see I'm doing here, and then immediately look inside the window here, the X and Y locations are being displayed. It's at 184, negative 184, negative 149. And so I can type those numbers in here, negative 184 and negative 149. And then, uh, no matter where the fish is on the screen, when I click the green flag, you'll notice the fish goes back to that location. That's where I want the fish to begin when the game starts. All right, next, I also want to uh, tell the fish here to point in a certain direction when the game starts. So I use the point and direction uh, block and I make sure my fish is pointed to the positive 90 direction, which is to the right. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, set rotation style to left, right. All right, after that, we're gonna go into the control tab and choose a forever block and then back to the motion tab and put a move six steps. Uh, I've tested the game with a few different numbers in here and found that six steps uh, is pretty good speed for the fish to move, making the game difficult, but not too difficult. All right, let's go ahead and just click the green flag and see what happens. Perfect, my little orange and white fish moves across the screen. However, he gets to the far right and he just stops. Uh, I don't want that to happen. Instead, I want the fish to, when he gets to that edge, uh, if he touches the edge, I want him to bounce. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put that uh, block in there. Now we can see he's bouncing back and forth across the stage, perfect. Okay, once I get my first fish moving like I want them to, all I uh, need to do is copy this code into one of the other fish. Here's how you do it. You can take this entire code block and simply drag it over on top of one of the sprites here. You'll see that sprite kind of wiggle and then go ahead and drop the code. Go to the fish, the blue fish, fish number two, and you'll see sure enough, the code has been dropped on there. Now, before we uh, proceed though, we need to change a few things. First of all, this, the costume needs to be set to fish B, which is my blue fish. Um, I need to also check out the location of this fish. Um, currently this fish, let's see if I move it to the right spot here, uh, I can see that it, it should be set at uh, about, oh, about negative 70, negative 70 on the X and the Y. So I'll try to change these numbers, negative 70 negative 70. Uh, instead of pointing to the right, I'm gonna have my fish initially point to the left. And also uh, leave the rest of the code the way it is. He'll move six steps and if on edge bounce. All right, let's go ahead and test this. Perfect, now I see that both the bottom two fish are moving. And again, uh, let's start again. When I click the green flag, one fish goes to the right, one goes to the left. Perfect. We're gonna proceed and do what I've just done for the other two fish so that I get them all moving um, in opposite directions and all moving across the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. Awesome, look, now all my fish, all four fish are moving back and forth across the screen. 
when I stop, they stop. When I click the green flag, they all start moving from their original position. This is exactly what we want. Okay, we're ready to move on and make our target that we're gonna use to um, click on the fish so that we can get points. Let's go ahead down now and go into our sprite window again, and we're gonna make a new sprite, but this time we're gonna paint our sprite. So click on the paintbrush. And in this window here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, choose uh, the circle object. We're gonna paint with about a four pixel wide stroke, an outline of black, but we don't wanna fill at all. So we'll come in here, click, and click on the red line. That means no fill. We'll go ahead and um, with the circle selected, we'll just go ahead and draw a perfect circle. If you hold the shift key down when you're doing that, you'll get a perfect circle. I think it needs to be a little bit bigger stroke, so I'm gonna make that a little bit fatter. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe 12 pixels wide, that looks good. I'm gonna center the circle right over this little gray spot right here. Then I'm gonna choose a line and I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag a line right across the center of that. Then I'm gonna come up here to the very top, same thing, but now draw a line from the top center down. So I'm making a crosshair or a target symbol. Perfect, that looks pretty good. Alrighty, I'm gonna go back to my code view now. Uh, this target's a little bit big on the screen, so I'll come in here and maybe make that about, uh, I don't know, 40%. Uh, it's still a little bit big. How about about uh, 25? There you go. That's good. Now this target, uh, I want it to follow my mouse wherever I go. So I'm going to add some code that will let that happen. Go to the code view here and um, choose the event block when green flag clicked. And then inside that, we're going to choose a forever block. And in the forever block, we want to go into the blue motion tab where things like position and movement are controlled. And we are going to do a set X and set Y. What this will do is control the location of this target sprite somewhere on the screen by its X and Y coordinates. And what we want to do is position this target symbol according to where the mouse is. In order to know where the mouse is, we go to the sensing area of our code and we'll see here we have mouse x and mouse y so if we just drag mouse x to the set x the mouse y to the set y what we'll do is we'll come out here if we click the green flag we'll see now just like that the target is going to follow the mouse wherever it moves that's that's real easy to do that's really cool before we proceed what we need to do too is make sure that we name our sprites appropriately. It's still called Sprite 1 and we don't want that. So let's come up here um, right above the Sprite window and let's just call this our target symbol. All right, just to review, it's called target. It's set to size 25 and we've added some code here that makes the target move wherever the mouse moves. One other thing you might want to do is go into the looks area and find the block that says go to front layer and set that right in here. What that does is it makes it so that your um, target symbol is always in front of the other graphic symbols. That way it won't go behind the fish as you're playing the game. Okay, now we're ready to take this simple animation and actually turn it into a game. But in order to do that, we need to keep track of points. And in order to do that, we need a variable. So let's go to the variable section, click on make a variable. We're gonna call it points. We usually select for all sprites and we don't usually select the cloud variable option. Click okay. We now see we have a new variable up here called points. And because it's checked here with the blue check mark, we see that it's showing up here in the upper left corner of our game screen. That's perfect. Now we want to program the target so that every time we click on the target and touch a fish, we get a point. But if we click the target and we don't hit a fish, then we lose five points. Here's how we do that. Go into the events area and find the block that says when this sprite clicked. And uh, let's go ahead and bring out, under control, bring out an if-else statement, okay? If-else is a selection statement 
basically it's giving you two different options in your program. If one thing is true, then do one, uh, then do one thing. And if something else is true, then do that. So let me explain more what I mean. Okay. We're going to come over to the operator section and find this or statement. Okay. And we're going to actually pull out three of them. One, and then put another or statement um, block on the left and another or statement on the far right. So now we see we have four different spots, which is perfect because we have four different fish. And what we're going to be doing is saying when the sprite is clicked, which means when this target is clicked, and if we are touching any one of these fish at the same time with the mouse, then we want something to happen. In other words, we want to get one point. So we're going to go into the sensing area and we'll find that we can put in um, a block here that asks if we are touching one of the fish. And you can see uh, I can pull out four of these, change that to fish two, and gonna move over a bit here. Fish three, fish four. All right, so now we see we have a big long statement that basically says if the mouse is touching either fish, fish two, or fish three, or fish four, if any one of those things is happening, then I want to get a point. So I go to my variable section and I choose the change my variable by one, but I change this to points because that's the variable I'm using, change points by one. Perfect. Now, if, if I'm clicking with the mouse with the target symbol, but I don't touch one of the fish, then that will be the else clause, meaning if this is not true, then the other option is that I've missed a fish. So I'm going to pull out one of these, change points, by, but instead I want to subtract five points. So if I touch a fish, I get one point, but if I miss the fish, I lose five points. Alrighty, let's go ahead and test this now and see if it's working properly. I'm going to go full screen, click the green flag. Perfect. If I click a fish, I'm getting a point. It looks like if I'm even close, I get a point. Perfect. It's working. Now, if I miss, oh, sure enough, now I'm getting negative points. Ah, that's not quite right. I want my game, uh, game over screen to pop up if I get to zero or less than zero. So I've got to change that. All right, it's working pretty well so far, but what I want to do is add one more Thing. First of all, also another thing to notice, if I start playing the game right now, um, we'll see that the points is still at negative 35. And so I need to set the points back to zero when I restart the game by clicking the green flag. So let's do that. Need to do is when the green flag is clicked right here when the game starts, I need to set my points back to zero, okay? And that, when I click the green flag, sure enough, now it's back to zero. Perfect. All right, so let's do one more thing. We're gonna make another sprite. We're gonna paint it. We're gonna come in here, choose the rectangle shape, fill it with some fun color. Doesn't really matter what. Fill it with some color, get some text. In there, let's just say game over. Oops, better change that text to something I can actually read. Let's make it bigger. Perfect. Okay, something simple like that. Alrighty. Let's make this so it fits in the screen. If it's a little too big, you can reduce the size a bit. All right, so we have this game over screen. However, it's covering up the rest of my game right now and I can't see my fish in the background. So I need to program this code 
this game over screen, by the way, we'll have to change the name of the sprite. Let's call it game over screen. Okay. And uh, what I want to do is program this so that when the game starts, it's hidden. So let's go to code, control, sorry, events, one green flag clicked, go to the looks area and find the hide block. What that does is hides this when the green flag is clicked. Sure enough, click the green flag and it goes away. So it's there, but it's just hidden. Now, what we want to do is back in our target um, sprite, we want to add a little bit more code uh, here into this section when the sprite is clicked. Basically, what we want to do is uh, ask if the points is equal to zero or the points is less than zero, then we want to broadcast a message, game over, which will make our game over screen appear. Okay, so this is how we can do that. We're going to find another in the control section. We're going to bring in another if statement and let's actually put it inside this else clause. So if we've just reduced the score by five points, we want to immediately ask the question if the points are is equal to or less than zero. Okay. Well, we need an or statement because we're checking two different things. Okay. And the first thing we're going to check is if the points is equal to zero. So we go to our variables here and find our points, pull it out. So we're saying if points is equal to zero or if oops, points is less than zero. Okay, now why am I asking if it's less than zero? Well, remember, we're reducing the score by five points. So it's possible if you have, say, three points and you subtract five, the, the score could become negative two. Well, if it's negative two, it's not equal to zero. It's less than zero. So we need to check for both possible conditions. So let's pull this variable designation out. So what we're asking now is if points is equal to zero or if points is less than zero, we want to show our game over screen. Well, how can we do that? We can't control one sprite from another sprite uh, directly. So what we have to do instead is broadcast a message. Let's go to events and we see this broadcast block. Let's pull that in there. You click where it says message one and you actually type a new message like, how about you lose as a message? Okay, let's say, okay. And if you broadcast you, you lose, then what we want to do is make this other sprite appear. So let's go over to the game over screen and bring out this when I receive block. And you're going to choose the when I receive you lose. Then what do we want to have happen? Well, go to looks and we want to show the screen. So if that message is broadcast, then we show our game over screen. All right, let's, I think we're ready to, sh uh, I think the game's done. Let's go ahead and test it. Let's click green flag. If I click on a fish, I get points. Points are going up. It's perfect. Game's working just like I want. Okay, but if I start to miss, sure enough, as soon as I went to a negative two, the game over screen appeared and the game's over. Okay, so that's a really simple game. It's teaching you a number of important concepts, um, how to use if statements, how to use variables, uh, how do you broadcast a message, how to make things appear and hide and all kinds of different things. There's really some important concepts here that you learn in this. So uh, once you've finished the basics here, go ahead and figure out how to add more creative, more creative elements to your game and just have fun with it. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks.